Hello guys, as it game plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And my girlfriend just asked me why uh, was I throwing the, the bottle just because I can. <laughs> so guys, today's video is about a thing that I actually wanted to do for quite some time and it is about the overclocking perks. In this case it is about the Ryzen 5 5600X and it is stock, okay, versus the static overclock, in this case 4.6 GHz in all cores, across all cores, so all cores will be constantly at 4.6 GHz versus the Curve Optimizer, which is kind of the PBO 2.0, while the stock settings usually uses the normal PBO. In the PBO 2.0, so the Curve Optimizer, you can actually do an undervolt for all the cores. So, when you are undervolting the core, so when you reduce the voltage, you actually have more space in terms of thermals and power draw. So when you have more space, what happens is that the CPU will also reach uh, higher frequencies. I think that the correct expression is like power room or thermal room to actually have higher frequencies, okay? So basically, yeah, that's it. In this video, we're testing the 3 on the Ryzen 5 5600X because it's what I have and only the Ryzen 5000 series can use the Curve Optimizer. So you have stock, static overclock and Curve Optimizer. Let's see which one is the best right after the sponsor of today's video. For today's sponsor, we have GVG Mall, where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16 and using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So guys, let's go to the results! Today's first game is the usual AC Valhalla using the X12 and high settings. As you can see the differences are all within the margin of error and even at 1080p high settings and almost 150 average FPS, the bottleneck is still the GPU in this scenario, hence the differences being null. We can only see at 1080p and 1440p, the static overclock seems to have 1 FPS less in the 1% lows, but apart from that, it is all the same. Now with Far Cry New Dawn using the X11 and Ultra settings. As you can see the results at 1080p and 1440p are fairly equal. That is because we do have a CPU bottleneck here, so I would expect better results for the higher clocks. Right? Not actually. Even with the CPU bottleneck, it seems that the static overclock to 4.6 GHz gives us the better results, with the stock and curve optimizer values being more or less the same. I sincerely thought that since Far Cry New Dawn uses only a few cores, the Curve Optimizer with higher frequencies would help. But I guess I was wrong. Interesting results. On Ghost Recon Breakpoint, what we saw in AC Valhalla gets more evident. The average FPS results are more or less the same and definitely inside the margin of error, being the difference mostly on the 1% lows, where the static overclock tends to have a bit lower results. 
Apart from that, it is once again more of the same, and the difference could never, and I repeat never, be noticed in terms of real gameplay. Finally, we have CSGO, where everyone has a love-hate relationship with this game. <laughs> As for results, we finally see a bit of difference. In terms of actual gameplay, it is a difference that I doubt that someone can notice, but it is something. At 1080p, Stock Ryzen 5 5600X gets around 650 average FPS, while the static overclock gets 665 and the curve optimizer gets us 668. So, 3 average FPS more. At 1440p, the curve optimizer actually has around 8 average FPS more than the static overclock, and at 4K, interestingly enough, the static OC is the one with the highest results. Although, like I said before, this isn't anything that you can actually notice in terms of real gameplay unless you have like a 480Hz monitor, so yeah. Let's move to the next game. To continue the list of competitive games, we have Fortnite using the X11 and high settings. Once again the difference is pretty small and can be considered inside the margin of error, this at least for averages. Once again the static overclock somehow gives us lower 1% lows at 1440p and 4K, and this time not only a short difference. At 1440p for example we have over 12 FPS difference in the 1% lows, from static OC to curve optimizer, which will be around 8%. At 4K the same difference is presented, so the pattern is here. A strange one definitely, but it is what it is I guess. Now with PUBG using the X11 and Ultra settings. This is actually the first game where we can see the average results constantly being higher, at 1080p by 6fps and at 1440p by 3. At 4K the results are equal because we run into a GPU bottleneck and overall the curve optimizer is a bit superior here but once again nothing that we can notice in real gameplay unless you're constantly looking at the FPS counter. Let's move on. Now with Need for Speed Heat using high settings. Take in consideration that this is a gameplay so the margin of error is quite bigger than the usual. At 1080p and 1440p we do have stock values being quite lower, this because Need for Speed Heat is heavy on the CPU side when trying to achieve high FPS numbers, and the CPU will downclock a bit when the load is high, hence the stock results being lower. The static overclock and the curve optimizer results are more or less the same since the margin of error is quite bigger here due to the AI cars. And without much more to say, let's move on. The final game is Civilization 6 using the X12 and high settings in the graphics benchmark. 
This is the first game where the static overclock is better in almost every scenario. I assume it is due to the game engine that stresses a lot the CPU in terms of multi-threading and the static overclock always maintains 4.6 GHz frequency across all cores no matter what, hence the higher results. I can be wrong, but it makes sense to me. As for the curve optimizer, it is better than the stock results at 1080p and 1440p, being really close to the static overclock results, but it is somehow slower at 4K, even though we have a GPU bottleneck. More of the same, so let's move on. Our last benchmark is Cinebench R15 Plus R20. So, overall we can see that the Curve Optimizer is better in terms of single core performance because it will usually boost to 4.75 or 4.8 GHz in most gaming situations, with a static overclock leading in terms of multi-threading scores by only a bit. And the stock results are quite disappointing in terms of multi-threading due to what I said before. Once the CPU gets high load, the boost frequency also gets lower, and lower results. But overall, for a multi-threading scenario, be sure to use Static Overclock or the Curve Optimizer. Let's go to the conclusion. So guys, as for the conclusion, what do you think about the results? Well, I before doing these tests, I was expecting a bigger difference, because mostly at least for the Curve Optimizer. And I say this because the Curve Optimizer is uh, always with all cores over 4.65 GHz usually, uh, and in some scenarios when the game uses uh, less cores, for example on Far Cry and in other games that uh, use less cores, what happens, is, what happens sorry, is that it actually boosts the Ryzen 5 5600X to around 4.75 or 4.8 GHz in those cores that are, that are being used. Um, and since we have more frequency, usually around 200 MHz more, or at least 175 MHz more, I thought that the performance would be better, but I was mistaken, because actually it isn't. And as you can see in some scenarios, having a static overclock is even better. And in most of them, even when we're not running into a GPU bottleneck, what happens is that the results are more or less the same. I mean, even on CSGO, when we're talking about 600 FPS or more, averages, not uh, current FPS, so 600, over 600 average FPS, when we're talking about those numbers, even on those numbers, the difference is like 3 or 4 FPS, which is nothing. Basically, what I mean with this is that uh, if you are actually using your PC like a normal person, let's say uh, if you want to play 75, uh, 100, 144 hertz, then you're completely fine, just not bother with this, unless you want to reduce the voltage to reduce power draw and temperatures, just don't bother, because the results will be more or less the same, and static OC, or maybe the curve optimizer, each one of those will be completely fine. Even the stock, even the stock. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video, let me know in the comment section what you think about the results, and well, without much more to say, I mean, See you in the next one. Why not? <laughs> Ciao.